come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Here we are. All right. All right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're coming live, <laughs> but it's not live. It's all recorded. It's Trevor. It's Katie. And we are talking on Franchise or Bust today with the man. He is not a myth, but he is a legend. It's Peter Carlson. It's no illusion. It's going to be a revolution. It's pet evolution. And we're talking all about it today with Pete, the man He up in Minnesota. He has spent many hours purifying himself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka just for this podcast. Pete, how you doing, my man? Trav, I could not be uh, happier and better. Thank you. And Katie, you look lovely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good to see you, brother. Hey, man, I love it. And don't forget about our title sponsor today. As always, it's going to be Ham's the Beer Refreshing, okay? You talking franchising or you're talking whatever, Any, it, you know, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's always good to have a, a nice sip of a beer from the land of the sky blue waters. And we'll get into that here in a little bit when we pull out our mystery wheel that's going to tell us whether we're going to hit the franchise or we're going to bust, okay? We'll, we'll hit more from that soon. Anyways... Pete, we're here today to talk specifically about all the things that it means to be on the franchisee and the franchisor side. And really, more than that, what do we got to do to not bust? What do we got to do to not fail? Because if there's one guy that's having this conversation right now that hasn't failed, it's got to be you. Because I've screwed up countless times at almost everything I've ever done. But you are sitting there causing a revolution in pet evolution. So maybe just kick us off right there. Tell us what pet evolution is and maybe tell us, I think more specifically what people might want to know. Tell us from your side of things, what are you doing given your you know, vast experience on both sides of the franchise or in the franchisee side to set things up specifically to make sure that, hey, this thing is, you know, this thing is going to go from emerging to actually successful. Oh, Trav, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I'm kind of pinching myself these days because uh, the big guy's looking out for me upstairs. That's all I can tell you. I've been very blessed to be in this industry for 20 years. As you know, I started out as a franchise consultant, helping literally thousands of different people, you know, getting into different kinds of franchise models and not only evaluating their skill sets, but also taking a look at their passions. And that's kind of how it all started for me. But as I was a franchise consultant, the world becomes your oyster, right? So you see all kinds of different things come across your desk, and my team would do their diligence on different models. Well, that was way back in 2002. Here we are in 2020. And last summer... Or 2021, either way. Oh, my God, that's right. Yeah, two th- where did that last you're, year go? Well, the problem is you're looking in a mirror and you're thinking, I look the same <laughs> as 2002, and you, it's hard to keep track of time. I get it. We look, we're looking at you. We see you. We know what you, you know, we get it. Well, no, I, you know, just so last summer I had just gotten, we had sold our Envy business. We had sold our Amazing Lash business in 2019, fresh out of the, you know, just right before the pandemic, frankly, you know, four to five months before this thing hit. And I was sitting at home last summer and I was kind of like, well, what's the next chapter, right? What's the next chapter? And, you know, when you start to ponder that, you and I haven't had the ability to do that for maybe a week or two. That's part of the problem because we get right back into the fire. And I didn't know that probably the biggest fire and the biggest opportunity was starting to come right now and then. And so... It's just crazy how it's all developed, but it started with my dog, Leo. He's the fourth standard poodle I've had, except for the poofs and frills. I just want to let the listeners know, Trev, today, these poor dogs that have gone through a litany of these Fifi hairdos with the poofs and frills. So I've had these dogs, my fourth one, Leo, you can hear him. He sounds like a St. Bernard. Um... He was really digestively struggling, meaning like he was getting sick all the time. And this was constant. Like every other couple of weeks, I'd have to start him over from scratch and, you know, get out the chicken and rice and build him back. And it really, really was tough. And then he started the allergies and I put him on Apoquil. That's kind of the catch-all medicine for 
these dogs, right? So I got them on that. I just knew something wasn't right. So I went online. In fact, I think I was talking to Katie and she goes, Pete, you better go online and figure this out. So I went online. I started to do my research and I found a guy, Trevor, named Dr. Marty, right? Now, Dr. Mm -hmm. Marty isn't Dr. Phil, but he got a start from Oprah. He's a really, really bright marketer. And I ordered all his dog food. And yeah, I knew it was freeze dried, but I'll tell you what, Trevor. I ordered this dog food. I put it in front of Leo. And Trevor, we've been out and had the opportunity to go to maybe a place like Ruth Chris or Morton's over the years. And we order a bone in ribeye and the, and the food comes. Well, when I got that dog food and it was freeze dried and I put it in front of Leo, it would have been like if you and I ordered that bone in ribeye and, and out from the kitchen came petrified wood. There was no way in hell he was going to eat that dog food. So I had, a, I had a package it all up, send it back. And so fast forwarding, I was kind of, kind of at this dilemma. I brought him into where I get him groomed, which is pet evolution. And I saw, oh my gosh, that's right. They, they specialize in nutritional dog food. So this woman by the name of Kaylee took me by the hand. She walked me through it and she said, Pete, your dog is like a wolf. They're like, you know, they're a carnivore. They're a pack animal. And what do wolves do? They're hungry like the wolf. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Like, right. Exactly. Basically, the whole deal was wolves are, you know, pack animals. And what do they do? They kill their prey and then they go ahead and they eat raw food that's the best thing you can feed your dog is raw food trev you know i'm on the go if i'm not going up to my cabin or down to florida or going and seeing my buddy tammy down in arizona i i'm just rolling and and i just knew i couldn't get into thawing dog food right it's not gonna yeah. work well no. so i said what else will work and so she showed me three different kibbles and i ended up settling on a brand called N and D manufactured in Italy. Of course, Trevor, leave it to the Italians, right? They have leave, every, leave everything to the Italians. Like don't, not just dog food. <laughs> right. I mean, I think you know, I've actually been taking Italian four days a week and I've been going to my favorite restaurant and yeah. I now know how to say tortellini, spaghettini, <laughs> Uh, rigatoni. And, rig, rigatoni. Rig, I, right. I, it's incredible i guarantee you if i just keep going to that same place four days a week i'll next thing you know i'll be speaking italian i don't doubt it well they actually have regulations on dog food and so the first ingredient in this formulation i got was is is literally deboned chicken so i get him home i start trans you know transferring it to him with a dog. You know, you got to go through blending his food so he doesn't get sick. I will tell you what, in seven to 10 days, I had a new dog. He totally transformed. And that's what really stopped me in my tracks. No more hot spots, no more allergies. They were all going away. His coat was healthy. He was healthy. And knock on wood or for Micah, or this wonderful margarita glass, 14 months later, he has not gotten sick one time. It's amazing. Because, nice. because of the food. So it all started with that truck. Fantastic. And so I think where you're, where you're setting yourselves up or setting yourself up here is the product, the actual success of it is what drove you to believe this is something that you really want to get involved in. Absolutely. And knowing just how passionate people are today about their dogs and cats, their family members. And I remember when you got your first one, right? And, you know, I mean, you couldn't stop talking about that Labradoodle you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Now I can't stop yelling at her because she wakes the baby up. And Mar yeah, we, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> the, the pendulum switch shift, but no, I'm with you. Yeah. And, and they are, they are members of your family, but you know, one of the, one of the cool things that I know uh, that you were when you were telling me this story before that I thought was really uh, really interesting is 
you know, the, the guys that were doing a pet evolution, they had really no, no plans or no real like thought process about, Hey, let's franchise this thing. Let's do, they were literally just sinking their teeth into something they thought was an excellent product. And I think that's where your franchise experience, your savviness comes into play to say, Hey, you know what? Maybe, you know, it, this is a superior product. Let me see if I can take it out there and really, you know, really grow it. You know, that's what was really cool about it. They had been approached three or four other times. Um, they loved the fact that I was a customer and I actually like went through this. So when I approached them, it was, you know, it wasn't like I was just doing it for uh, S's and G's. I mean, I, I really thought this is something we can bring to the world and change what a lot of people are struggling with. And so when I, when I approached him, it was funny, Ryan Thiel, one of the co-founders, he actually tested me and he wanted to see if I was just in there to make money. And so he talked to me about this really good company up the road that were manufacturing these pot pies. And he said, Pete, you know, you should really talk to them as well. And I looked at him and I said, Trevor, I said, Ryan, I said, I have no interest in talking to them. I said, I want to talk to you because what you guys are doing could change the lives of not only the dogs and cats, but people too that have struggled with this. So, yeah, I mean, that was that was late last summer. Here we are now into 2021. We registered the franchise in March. We already have seven regionals sold across the country and nine additional licenses here in Mini. So it's just taken off. And of course, the pandemic, everything's fueling that. It's just, it's been incredible so far. That's amazing, man. And would you say kind of uh, just from a, a confidence standpoint, because, you know, you're, this is the first time you're really on the emerging side, right? You've, you've, yes. you've like you mentioned before, you were a consultant. You, you understand, you know, business, business brokeraging, all those kind of things that you've done for so many years, but kind of new to the world of, hey, sink or swim, right? I mean, I'm, you know, you're on the hook for moving this thing forward. Would you say that the most important, well, what would you say is kind of the most important thing that you're seeing that you're really confident in uh, for, for believing that this is going to, this is going to really take off for you? Trav, I'll tell you what, it, it always comes down to the people. And I called my good buddy, Fred Machaki, who, you know, has been with me on a number of different businesses from Massage Envy, the Amazing Lash. You know, our sons played hockey. You know, Fred moved to Minnesota to give his son, Freddie, a hockey experience here. I love that. He bought a cabin up north. You know, he took on the whole Minnesota thing, he even bought what's called an ice castle. Well, that's a little scary because isn't that where Elsa lives? From Frozen. <laughs> if we we don't want any. We don't want Elsa showing up and freezing yeah. everybody in the ice oh, castle. Oh no, the ice castle is the best ice fishing house you can fish in, Trevor, with the comforts of home. And I think every one of their refrigerators is stacked with hams. Just so you know, our but title I, sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> and, and every single one of them up there is absolutely as refreshed as they could possibly be. Well, they are. They're cold and refreshed. Mm -hmm. And so Fred even bought the damn ice castle. But anyways, yeah, I called him and I said, hey, I think we've got something that you got to take a look at. You got one more ride in you. And he was he was to the store with his wife within hours, you know, having his, his dog go through the dog wash and taking it in and you know, feeling that customer experience, which is really our secret sauce. I, I mentioned Kaylee and how she took me by the hand, but Fred saw it immediately. And then we we really got down to brass tacks, you know, um, partnered with the best law firm in the country, a guy named Joe Fatante with Larkin Hoffman here in Minnesota. And their, their, their clients are Burger King Worldwide and Radisson Group and Anytime Fitness. And Joe's just one of those attorneys that you can trust actually. And he's just a hell of a good guy. And so we did that. And then we partnered with the I Franchise Group. I mean, there's nobody better at putting the ops manuals together. So here we are. We're registered in all 50 states, less than five months in. And yeah, we just, the trajectory, I it's incredible. That's amazing. I want to talk about uh, the legal side uh, for a minute, because as we, you know, th this is definitely meant to, to tell your story and to kind of joke around and, and enjoy ourselves. But we also want to inform a little bit, and that's something for someone like you. You know, it it may seem obvious 
to a lot of people like, oh, we better have great legal. And we, But why is that so important? Because you know that <laughs> if you don't set things up on that side of the world, on the front end, uh, perfectly, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, really. So, so maybe talk through some of that. And have you seen examples maybe in your career where that's not been the case? I have, actually. And I'm glad that you brought that up. I mean, Back in my consulting days, I remember, and I won't mention any names, there was a senior- Oh, no, mention it. Bury them. Bury these people. <laughs> Let's just put the shovel on them, right? Yeah. Now, this, was a, this was a franchise, or I'll just say out on the East Coast, and um, he was talk. I was, I was a consultant at the time, and I was asking him about, I think it was the state of Maryland, and I had a candidate in Maryland, and I asked him, I said, well, are, you know, are you registered in Maryland? And he goes, well, I think so. Of course, I made a mental note of that. I thought to myself, you think so? Mm. Do you not know that you can't even have a conversation with somebody unless you're formally registered? And so I eased that into the conversation later. But you know that he didn't even know that he could not talk about a franchise opportunity that he had. Like he was the owner. He was the franchisor. Unless you were registered in the state. But it's stories like that. It's stories where franchisors have have tried to go on the cheap in creating their FDDs and their documentation. And of course, where does that get them? Right back to ground zero. Because as these examiners through the states look at these documents, they have red flags popping and check marks popping all the way through. And the, and, and the franchisor can't figure out why they're not getting registered. And I'll tell you, that was probably the best decision that we made right from the rip in getting Joe and his firm involved. Got to have it. I'd say number one way that you could be you could bust would be to not get great legal on the front end. And speaking of busting, I got to tell you, we've, we've got we've got a treat right now because we're about to spin the wheel of destiny. We're about to spin the wheel to find out. <laughs> Are we going, is this, maybe even is this conversation a bust or not? We don't know. The wheel is going to tell us. We either are going to land on franchise or we're going to land on bus. Seems like this wheel might even be, why well, it might even be biased. I don't know. But if we land on bus, we got to have a drink or we're going to reset and we're going to forget it ever happened. All right, here we go. Let's spin yeah. the wheel. Ah, uh, oh, we busted. All right, everybody. <laughs> have a drink. We got to, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Very good. <laughs> all right pete <laughs> awesome stuff well man you know you're the the the, the wisdom there of kind of hey don't penny pinch this is your you're trying to make this thing <clears throat> excuse me the right way want to make sure you're actually setting yourself up for success what are some other things maybe on like the uh you know, on, on kind of the, well, you mentioned your FDD, setting things up on the franchisee side to where it becomes attractive. You've kind of hit some, some great points here. Number one, you have to have a product that you actually care about and you know for a fact works. So right, right, right away, you're starting out at an amazing point. You know this works, you know it's great. Number two, set that legal standard. Otherwise, you're, you're, in, you're in deep trouble. What about the franchisee side? How do you get them excited? What What's in that FDD that really matters to them, given kind of that you know both sides? Well, you know, everybody always wants to ask you, you know, how much money can I make? And what are the financials? And what does that look like? So it used to be where franchisors, companies would not talk about earnings or any kind of earnings claims because then they felt like they were on the hook from a liabilities perspective to actually put them in the document. That's all changed now. So the one thing about Pet Evolution that is unlike many different startup emerging franchisors or concepts is the fact that it's based on a nine-year history. So with our model, we're, we, we've got very strong financials. Our flagship store in Woodbury, and I can talk about this because it is in our FDD under what's classified as the item 19 that's just the classification code if you're going to... Classic item 19. I, you don't have to tell me about item 19. You know all about it. Listen, there's some franchise consultants that have done a, a lot of business over the years that even on a license plate has item 19. Item 19. That's right. <laughs> right. Got to have it. You got to have it. So our Woodbury flagship 
store did 1.85 million in revenue in 2019. Uh, did that also in the pandemic year of 2020. And then, of course, this year, we're going to kind of hit that next plateau. But the point being is people always want to know, how much money can I make? And obviously, oh. the, net, the net profit is a is a moving target depending on operation, operational efficiency and, and everything else. But, you know, it really boils down to you have to make sure that if you have something exciting like we have to talk about, you want to make sure that you do disclose that and you legally disclose that. Because really, I mean, as the president of the company or any of my colleagues, if we're talking about the franchise, we can't talk about anything more from a financial perspective that isn't denoted in the item 19. So that's something that's really critical to do as you're looking at the legal docs and as you're, you know, putting out your story. Totally, man. And, and you're, you know, like you said, your whole point is you've got to attract uh, attention. You've got to attract franchisees and you want that transparency front and center to say, yeah. Hey, look, this is what it's going to be. Come on board. Yeah, absolutely. Trev. And, and, you know, the other thing is, is that we did, is out of the box, we were able to make connections with the three top broker referral networks in the country, in Franchise, FranNet, and, and the IFPG group. And those groups are, are far and away the best three groups in the country. And we were very fortunate to get in on the ground level, you know, having really not even sold a, a franchise or even started franchising. But I was very fortunate and blessed in the fact that, you know, I have relationships with those groups. Um, we've, we've done a lot of business over the years. I, I love and respect them. But what they end up bringing you, Trev, is they end up bringing you an individual, a candidate that you never, ever would have ascertained or received yourself marketing. And that's the most beautiful part of that relationship. I love that. The, and what you, you just hit your net on, nail on the head. So something that I think is always a truism in business. So if we're talking franchise, or it, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Uh, people still want to do business with people. And a lot of that has to do with the culture. You have these relationships. You've built them. You know people to talk to. You've got you know folks you can kind of go to. You put yourself in a position where, hey, I can start a franchise brand. It's very likely I'm going to succeed. Very unlikely I'm going to bust out and it's not going to go anywhere. And the main reason for that is you've you've developed relationships and that revolves centrally around culture. So maybe maybe talk a little bit about some toxic cultures you've seen. You have to name names or you can. Who cares? Screw them. Right. Nobody's going to see this anyways. Um, you can talk <laughs> about that or you can you can, you know, just talk in generalities about it. Hey, I know the difference between toxic culture and good culture and what it looks like and and thus how it grows a business. You know, you know that I, I had a 14 year run with Massage Envy and there were franchisees that we had, you know, we, we built the, the Chicago region, you know, very fortunately into the largest region in the country with 47 locations. We had also the highest average unit volumes in the country at 1.3 million, but we had some of the best franchisees in the country and there were franchisees that built a culture in, in our windy city market that were unparalleled. Um, there was a guy named, you know, Justin Huditz that rolled up his sleeves. He was involved in the business from day one. His managers loved him. They absolutely would take a bullet for him. And that culture, Trev, as you know, and you built it within your own business at LSM, you know you have. And I've always admired that about you. But those types of people, to be able to build that culture, it's unparalleled. And so what's really great is this concept, Pet Evolution, Ryan and Mike, the co-founders, built an amazing culture. And what I'm trying to do is take what I've learned from others and trying to incorporate it with the people, not only that we've hired, but with our market partners, too, as regional developers, because I'm only going to be as good as my regional developers, period. Just that's the end of the story. If they can 
bring in quality people and attract quality people, we're gonna we we will become the biggest pet brand in this country. I have no doubt. Absolutely. I well, I have no doubt either. So culture's huge, legal's huge. We're we're going down the right track here. We know what we got to do. We know we're not gonna bust, but can we be sure that we're not gonna bust? Let's <laughs> consult the wheel. I don't know. We're, we what? I let's, the wheel, let's, Trump. let's consult the wheel. We have to see. Here we go. Katie, are you empty? You better get a refill. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh. We hit franchise. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign. That is a golden <laughs> sign. Look at that. You had a one. Wow. And, what is this? Like 12th chance of actually hitting franchise? Ball I, game. Yeah. yeah. This is we, going well. It, it, you know what? You know what? Everybody, it's a revolution. It is no illusion. Pet evolution is going <laughs> straight to the top. Okay, if you're entertaining, use your lazy Susan. I mean, we I can keep going. I can rhyme. I can spit rhymes all day. I'm just saying the the, the wheel doesn't lie. I love the wheel. I love the wheel. <laughs> so, so, uh, talk a little bit just briefly. Again, we're we're hitting the super high points here. We're hitting the points that matter, and really, what we're trying to to, again, what we're trying to accomplish, what we're uncovering from an expert is, is how do you, how do you take something from, you know, from concept to true success and true growth? Uh, how do you set goals? I mean, what's the, what's the, how do you look at kind of marketplace and understand where you're at and really set some goals to where, because as we know, goals can be amazing, but they can also be demoralizing if yeah. you don't, come anywhere near them. So talk to us a little bit about your goal setting. You know, when we were uh, in Joe's office uh, back in, in November, December, you know, grinding out our FDD and putting it together. And, you know, I wanted to create something always in franchising. The biggest, the biggest gripe that you hear from investors is, oh, this is a one-sided agreement. And, you know, this is, this only favors the franchisor. And the reason that that's the case is because, you know, you have to have something uniform that's consistent, that, you know, has something where the brand will hold up, whether it's in, you know, Murfreesboro, uh, Tennessee, or if it's in, uh, you know, Bemidji, Minnesota, you have to have that consistency. And so as we were going through it, we first of all created what I'll call a more franchisee friendly document. And so we started with that. And as we started to talk to some of the people that we knew uh, from our you know, previous experiences that came on board, they commented about that. But one of the things, Trevor, that I'm, I'm proud of is the fact that I told my regional developer partners that came on board, I'm going to take front and center on working with those initial candidate calls, every one of them. And you know, Trev, that is a monster task. Mm -hmm. And I knew what I said when I said it, but it's something that you just, it takes precedent over everything we do are those initial calls. And so our process is very streamlined. I'll have that initial call. It can go 45 minutes. My longest one has gone two and a half hours. It depends on the breadth of questions that you get into, how deep you get into it. And then our second step is to do a Zoom call with Fred and myself. And if there's a regional developer in play, we then invite them in. And then the third step of the process is really to come in for Discovery Day. It's very streamlined. But taking that on as the president and, you know, a co-owner of this franchisor, I knew that that would be a big task. And I said to my regional developers that, and, and many of them are, are, are really, really good at that, but they appreciated the fact that I was willing to do that. And it comes again back to the people. We want to make sure we're bringing in not just somebody who can fog a mirror and write a check is what we used to say back in the old days, but somebody that can really make a difference, be a brand ambassador and a team player. That's what we're looking for. A lot of people uh, who may or may not listen to this probably won't realize how rare it is for the president, for the you know the CEO, which you are of the brand, uh, to get on those calls. That's not normal. 
Uh, and, and that just shows that, you know, you're in it to win it, man. You, you want to, you know, you know, believe in it and you want it to succeed. Yeah. And, it, yeah. To that point, I, I, I really feel that I owe that to my partners. I owe that to the people that have come on board and look, we're, we're not doing this to, you know, just put up a hundred units. We're doing this to be the biggest and the best pet wellness brand in this country. And uh, that, that, that I think will help us in that, but it's really about the people. It all always comes down to the people. And I'm very blessed to have great partners with this venture. Roger Sterling on Mad Men once said, business comes down most of the times to, hey, you know what? I like that guy or I don't like that guy. And oftentimes you make your decisions kind of based on that. When they get on the phone, these potential franchisees, and they talk to you, who couldn't like you? What's not to like? That's what I want to know. They get on the phone, they talk to you, boom, sold, easy. It's no problem. Yeah, well, I wish it were that easy. It was interesting. There was a, a really cool guy that we got actually through uh, digital. And uh, he's, a, he's a gentleman down in Houston, Texas. His name's Monish Shada. And Monish looked at 23 pet concepts. Think about that. 23 pet concepts. I, I think you know me. I, I could never, I, I could maybe look at two and I, I'm done. I can't handle it. I'm, I'm either buying or moving on. I mean, he took in discovery days for three, which were Pet Supply Plus, Dogtopia, and Sentown, where he went down there, he kicked the tires, he met with the CEOs, and he was in day two of discovery with us. And uh, we were driving back to the airport, and you know me, Trev, my style is not to take a chloroform rag and hold it over their, their mouth. That's not the way I work. And you either see the opportunity and the vision or you don't. And he looked at me and he said, Peter, he goes, I'm in. I go, you're in. He goes, I'm in. I said, wow, Monash. I said, I'm so excited. I said, tell me, how did you come to that? And he said, well, he goes, a mentor of mine once said, when you go to the horse track, bet on the horses. But I don't. I bet on the jockeys. And he started to speak about our executive team. He started to speak about my partner, one of my partners, Ryan Thiel, the co-founder, and his passion behind this whole wellness piece. And he said, you guys have the team. He goes, you have the exact perfect alignment of services and product and retail. And he goes, I believe you'll be the number one brand. I was absolutely floored and just felt a ton of gratitude. This is a guy who's a multi-unit owner in, in another brand. He is involved in commercial real estate. He owns an AI company. And he also, with partners, brought 4G to the country of Africa. He's a whole hell of a lot smarter than I am, Trump. And I just could not believe that he really was left with that. It really made me even see further as to what we have and how special it is. That's outstanding. You know, for a minute there, I thought you were going to say that he thinks that Fred would make a good jockey, but I know Fred, and I know that that is not the case. Fred would not make a good jockey. He would, you would no. have to have a, you'd have to have a Clydesdale to, to run Fred down the, uh, down the track. Well, and, and I think after that first turn, you know, Fred would, Fred would be hanging on to that horse, but we don't know if yeah. he would be dragging, right? Right. Right. By the it's, way, if, if you haven't pulled up, and Katie's going to have to maybe pull this up, yeah. it is from that movie Secretariat. Ugh. And that last scene, and I pulled this up the other day, you can see the goosebumps. Secretariat by Benny. Because as that horse is, is going around the track, and as it starts to take that lead on Sham, I believe, is the other horse, and a bigger horse. And now Secretariat by five lengths. Secretariat by ten lengths. And they're into the final turn. And, it, and like, Secretariat wins by, like, 24 lengths, and now i got gooseys on my cheeks, Trump. <laughs> but that scene, I, I, I couldn't help but bring it up because now I'm thinking about Fred on secretary <laughs> you think you think secretary would have still won with fred on the horse 
I think Secretariat would have probably had some type of stroke or would have had to lay down and there would be no more Secretariat because once Fred got on that thing, it's it's over. Oh, Fred, we love you. <laughs> so, he, will, he will enjoy that. He will enjoy that. Agreed. Okay, so so let's let's kind of let's let's talk through here on some of this recap because man, this has been amazing stuff. And the reason, you know, this is our this is our first one that we're doing, and we wanted to have you in particular because you are you know you are the authority when it comes to the franchise space, and we've we've nailed down some really key things here, and a lot of it boils down as we've been discussing. A lot of it has boiled down to. You got to have the right people. You got to have the right culture. You got to have those things. Pay attention to your legal. Don't be cheap. Make sure you get things set up correctly. Do your due diligence. And a lot of it reminds me of the fact that, you know, starting a franchise brand or becoming a franchisee, either way, you look at it. When you go in, when you go into business, you better be serious about it. And it's, it's, you got to really dot your I's and cross your T's and make sure you have all those things together and pay pay very very close attention to who you're getting into bed with and and yeah. what's going on across you know across the network other franchisees the exec team etc because that's who's really going to make you succeed yeah no you're right trev and, and you know i think the biggest thing too and there's there's so many different things that we've been blessed to learn over the years you know whether it was you know the original golden rule that we all grew up with where you treat others the way you know, you want to be treated. And then that evolved into Myers-Briggs philosophy of treating others the way they want to be treated. It comes down to people. It comes down to staying with your word. If you say you're going to do something, to follow through with that and to just, you know, do the best that you can. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Nobody's going to bat a thousand. We're not going to bat a thousand. You know, this will evolve. And pet evolution, two, three years from now, will will look a little different or a lot different than it does today. But that's about progression. That's about falling off that horse, right, and getting back on. And you know what? I'm I'm really excited about just the track and the landscape. And I am really elated that you asked me on today. It's my pleasure. Real quickly, am I going to see you coming up this year at some conferences? Are you going to go to the IFA? Are you going to get involved? How important is that, by the way, to oh, go, you know, go get really in there with people? Important, Trev. I mean, that's that's one of the fundamental blocking and tackling things that you have to do as a franchisor. You've got to go down to the IFA because it all comes back, Trev, and you know this, and you you've you've actually been a tremendous student of this over the years, in the sense that. None of us know everything, right? We don't know what we don't know. And when you go to a conference like the IFA, you learn about things that you didn't even have a clue about that you can bring into your model to make you better at what you guys do. It's just, yeah, it's an absolute no-brainer to go there. We will definitely be down there. Fantastic. I can't wait to see you. And, uh, you know, I can't think of a way to wrap this up any better than to figure out, are we, are we, how are we, what are we doing here? What, you know, we thought, we thought, we thought that we're, okay, we're going to leave that there as being gold, but we're just going to do this one for fun because we know that the, the wheel has spoken. Franchise success is happening, but let's, let's just see, let's just see where we, because if we hit double, ah, oh, well, oh, we both, okay. No, we busted. <laughs> I know we busted, yeah. but that just means we all okay. cheers each other. Here we go. We talk about Cheers. how it's Cheers. been fantastic to uh, to talk to you and to really, you know, really get your expertise and understanding. And we we have no, you know, no doubts in our mind that uh, Pet Evolution is going to go places, and it's it's got everything to do with what you've been talking about. We're excited for you, and uh, you know what? Uh, maybe maybe six months from now, I might have you back on. I'm probably going to be a pretty big celebrity by then, so I'm. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have you on, but yeah. Sure. All I can say is, is Joe Rogan, look out. And I can't <laughs> yeah. wait to come on in six months. And, you know, Trev, we might be talking about a Sasquatch adventure up in Vancouver <laughs> Island. That's, I think we might be talking about that topic. 
I think I think we maybe should be talking about mermaid adventures down in <laughs> down in. I don't. I don't <laughs> He's more of a, a beach guy. I don't, I don't know if this southern boy is uh, is venturing up to visit the Sasquatch anytime soon. But uh, I've, I've known you for how many years? You've invited me to the to the cabin up in up in the ice fishing. Yeah, no thanks, but it's yeah. Up there, it's up there. Katie, hey. when you fire up the ice castle. Yeah. His eyes are going to get like saucers when he sees the comforts of home in that ice castle. People in short sleeve shirts, oh. drinking hams, having fun, catching walleyes. Gare Bear and I will get you up there. You're not you're not fooling me. I've got little children and I've seen Frozen probably 800 <laughs> times. And I know exactly what happens in those ice castles. There's monsters. There's all kind of stuff. I'm staying away. But anyways... This has been franchise robust, Pete. There you have a you have a zero point zero percent chance of busting. We know <laughs> it's just franchise or all the way, baby, and we're excited. And we look forward to it growing. Huge thank you for that, Katie. Thank you for the laughter. We're uh, we're, we're that, <laughs> we got a system going. We're gonna keep it going. And uh, uh, amazing, Pete. Thanks so much, buddy. Oh man, thank you for having me on, buddy. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and Katie, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, come on, yeah, let's go.